Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kingdom Concepts. You might be sitting there and saying, wait a second, that does not look like Pastor Josh. And you would be correct. We have taken over the show for this week, and um, I'm here with our children's director, Miss Elizabeth Valenzuela. Elizabeth, why don't you go ahead and say hello? Hi, everyone. You might have noticed um, that we get to wear our fun shirts today. We have our fun cups of water. And um, it's because we're going to be talking about some fun things. We're going to be talking about children's ministry and, and what that role plays in the life of a believer and in the lives of your children. And maybe you're here and you're saying, hey, I don't have children. Well, this everybody has a part to play when it comes to training up the next generation. And so I want to go ahead and just take that time and and jump right into our key scripture. And um, and we're just really going to unpack this. We're really going to take this, you know, far and see where we come. Amen. So why don't we go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. And I'm going to go ahead and read this out of the King James Version. And then um, we will read it in the Amplified as well. Okay, so Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says this. Um it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I love that. I always, as a parent, I always have to keep telling myself, Here, you got to do this. You got to do it right. Um, why don't you go ahead and read that out of the Amplified? Okay. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and in keeping with his individual gift or bent, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Isn't that so, so awesome. good? Yes. So there's a part that we all play in this, and I know that you just got done shooting, um, you know, a bunch of episodes for our children's ministry so that we can put them out. You know, right now a lot of kids are at home, and you wanted to do something further for them, not just our regular live stream, yes. but you wanted to do something specifically for them. And um, if you're wondering, this is our amazing <laughs> set. This is where, that's why we have all her game props back here. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about that, a little bit about of why you felt it was so important to give something specifically to the children right now. Um, I know that right now, you know, we're having church online for all of the adults, but it's really important for the kids as well to keep, you know, um, just learning about Bible scriptures because they're small. Um, I heard a minister say one time that children, even though they're kids, their Holy Spirit is the same. It's the yeah. same spirit, you know, when they're kids, when they're older. So right now during this time, it is the best time to be at home and them learning about the Word of God and, and just keeping up with, you know, at Children's Church, we have a memory verse and they learn it and they learn the stories. And it's so important for them to continue just as adults to yeah. continue having that word in their heart and learning what is going to be important for them when they grow up when they're mm -hmm. our age and that's so important that's so true and I, I remember that same when I heard I believe it was Kelly Copeland when I heard she, her she you know Commander Kelly when she said that yes. she said they don't have a junior Holy Spirit and I remember <laughs> right. sitting back and thinking oh like duh yeah. but I didn't think about yes. it when you think Hey, if I just give them the word, mm -hmm. you know, if we just do what the scripture says and train them up, yes. that Holy Spirit is the same Holy yes, Spirit. Absolutely. All they need to do is learn how to, you know, listen and to respond. Yes. And, um, you know, one thing that I think is so important is, is that there, like I said earlier, there's an importance of every family member doing their part to help, you know, train up. Yes. Uh, the children, yes. you know, the parents, obviously, but also even grandparents. Grandparents yes. have a part to play. Yes. Um, their roles may be different, but they have a part to play. Um, and the reason I think it's so important, one of the reasons I think, you know, we do ministry mamas. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was so great that I got to do this with you <laughs> because it, they kind of work hand in yes. hand, children's ministry and mm -hmm. ministry mamas, um, is Children are looking at their sphere of their sphere of influence yes. around them. They're looking at every person. When we allow our children to be in any type of group setting, they're pulling for examples yes. constantly, yes. right? So what are some of the things that you think we could do at home to help, you know, do our part in being a good example to children? Well, it's really important, you know, kids will do what they see. You mm -hmm. know, their parents are their heroes and they will do exactly what their parents do. 
And so it's really important that, you know, that you continue to pray. You know, um, when we would go to school, me and my boys, we would pray. You know, mm -hmm. we had this little thing that we would, we had a scripture and we'd pray for our family and our friends, you know, for the whole day and that hedge of protection, you know, and continuing to do that just because they're not going to school at this time right now, mm -hmm. continuing to pray with them, continuing to show them, you know, um, the love of God and that we don't have fear during this time and and just continuing to make sure that you put the word in in front of them mm -hmm. but also being that example as far as like you're not trying to teach them the word but then you're saying totally different when it's that conversations yes. at home that is the most important thing because kids during children's ministry kids say everything <laughs> <laughs> they, they tell all <laughs> yes they tell all so it's really important to be the same person at home when you're at home when you're anywhere with your kids especially when it comes to the word of god because you could confuse them if you're saying one thing you're saying don't fear or don't do this but then as a parent what you're saying is totally opposite so mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you do that and you continue to do that right now yeah. even them at home and encourage them yeah and that can be said to anybody if yes. you're in any capacity of leadership even yes. if you don't have children or or you say you're yes. a believer those kids, you know, especially like those ministry kids who are there early at yes. services, they're watching what comes out of your mouth. And if they see, you know, oh, well, leader so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know, is speaking negatively. Leader so-and-so isn't yeah. using faith words. They're going to, like you said, it's going to yeah. confuse them. So we all have a part to play, even if it's not your kid, even if it's, you know, you don't have children. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian, as a believer, we need to take up our, yes. you know, responsibility to be good examples to yes. these next generation because yes. ultimately we want them to go further yes, than what absolutely. we are, absolutely. you know, and what we're doing. And, um, you know, like you said, kids, they soak up everything. <laughs> they do. They <laughs> pick up on everything. Yeah. Kids, you know, I don't know. I don't have to convince you of this, but like your children will remember things. Yes that you don't even remember <laughs> saying. Um, you know, I remember when I did youth ministry, uh, you know, like I, kids, they say everything. And in, in, in youth even, we would have like kids that would just start kind of saying what happens in their home. And I would be like, you know, and not in bad homes either, just like, hey, maybe don't say that, you know, that your mom farted, you know, or your, right. you know, or your, you know, like that's not necessary information. But, um, you know, more importantly than that, they're looking up at the, at every yes, single thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I always say this. This is one of the things I, I started off very early in ministry, Mama, saying is that kids are your first congregation. Yes, absolutely. They are your first. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if, if I want God to trust me, you know, in front of a camera, or I want God to trust me with more, mm -hmm. then he's going to look at, well, what are you doing with what you have? Absolutely. What are you doing at home? You know, before you can get on that stage, how did you treat your first congregation? Mm -hmm. Before you, you know, ask to be a leader or more responsibility, it's yeah. like, you have to be faithful with what you have. Yeah. And it's not just the children's <laughs> right. minister's job. Yes. Um, how Have you seen that, you know, as your years that you've been doing children's ministry? Have you seen it? Give us some examples of how it's done well and maybe how it could be fixed. Uh, in the ministry? In the ministry, as how parents kind of relate with, you know, because you guys are supposed to work together. Yes, yes. Um, so give us some examples kind of how. Uh, well, you know what? It, uh, our curriculum that we have is so amazing because we give the parents tools, you know. It's but amazing. we only see them Thursdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. And so the parents see them all week. And they're going to they're gonna grasp whatever we show them. But like you said, the first ministry is at home. Mm -hmm. And so I think I've seen, we have had so many examples, which is so amazing. Um, of kids, what they learned at church, their parents made sure they reinforced it at home. That's like so the dreams, important. The visions, you know, they, they've they put out, they've set out like, this is what I'm believing for. And then they'll come back to church and they're like, we, we did it. You know, we received it because that was the parent as well, reinforcing mm -hmm. the word of God that we have taught them. And at the same time, sometimes we have kids, you know, that um, we have kids that come and they struggle a little bit to learn the memory verse. And but it's so important for the parents to take that role once they leave mm -hmm. the church to to be able to help them. Um, we have incentives in our church. And and when we see the parents are helping them, we know which kids. And then mm -hmm. we also know which kids, you know, they might not have that um, that help at, at home. But for a parent, it is so important 
not to just say, well, they go to church and they're going to learn what they learn at church. No, mm -hmm. it's all responsibility as a parent to continue to teach them in home what they're learning at church. Mm -hmm. Just as an adult, we have to, we don't go to church and just listen to the word. We have to continually read our word, continually, you know, pray. And, and those things are taught when kids see that their parents are doing it, then they do it. Even when, like it says, train your kids in the way they should go because they get older and they're going to know what they were taught. And if you have to know that and every parent's not perfect. I'm not a perfect parent. Not either. And, you know, and sometimes some parents are like, oh, my gosh, I didn't do good. You know what? You just dust yourself off. You ask the Lord to help you. <laughs> and he will. He'll definitely will. But it's so important that you're training them, that you're showing them by your example in home all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I love um, And one of the amplified versions, it says, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talents. And I love that part, teaching him to seek God's wisdom because it goes along yes. with what we said in the beginning. They don't have a junior deputy right. Holy Spirit. They have the same Holy Spirit you and I have. Yeah. Um, you know, they didn't give them an adolescent one just because right. they're an adolescent. And I think that's so important to make sure you give your children an opportunity to, um, to voice yeah. what God's doing in their life. Mm -hmm. And you know, what do I mean by that? Like, uh, one of the things that you guys did was, and you kind of referenced it, was having them do their vision boards. Mm -hmm. Well, you did one at the church. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the beginning of the year, you had them write down a thing they were believing for. Yes. And I remember that throughout the year, you guys would write down done yes. and, and write the name, you mm -hmm. know, that it was finished. And that spoke volumes to my kids. Yes. Because when I was at home, I got to talk to them about that principle, okay, well, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And then just letting them talk, you know, um, because God's speaking to them yes. and encouraging yes. God to speak to them. And and I think if we can't just, like you yes. said, just take them to church, be a good example. But then if we're not, you know, kind of cultivating yes. that out of them, like, okay, well, what do you think about this situation? You know, let's pray about this situation together and making it really a family yes, dynamic absolutely. fully, absolutely. not not missing anything and kind of, um, covering everything and kids believe big like when yeah. you like there is nothing too big for them so it's so awesome to see them write down like these big things and you know sometimes I think as adults we're like uh but we shouldn't be that way <laughs> right. we should be the bible says we should have childlike faith mm -hmm. and they do they have when you tell them to write down what you're believing for they're like I'm going to put this, this, that. And for us, it might be like, <laughs> but for them, they're like, God can do it. And that's yeah. how we as adults, we yes. can learn from them sometimes. That's how we should with our faith, you know. And it's just amazing to see, like, when they're being taught and when they're writing down their visions, you know, that they believe big. It's not something, you yeah. know, that, oh, it's it's out of reach. It's like God can do it. <laughs> they, and you know what, they teach me because yes. you can really find where you're hung up on <laughs> yes. when you go to speak to a kid and they've said something that kind of stops you. Like when you sent home one time, you had them made their vision boards and they brought it home. And it was just, you guys, it was so simple. You could do it at home. It wasn't like, oh, we had to go buy all these boards. It was really just like a big cardboard and they put all their stuff on it. And um, there were, I remember one of my kids, I mean, they had, you could tell, I mean, I have all boys and uh, they had the Wheaties, <laughs> you know, they clipped out the Wheaties, you know, the strawberry kind. And we hadn't had that before. So I was like, check that off their vision board. We just went and grabbed some. But then they also had like um, a new house and like a jungle gym and then a limousine. And I think it was like all gold. And, um, and you know, just like these mansions and things like that. Things that are not even built where we live, um, you know, things that are not that grand where we live and you know I think that I I think pretty big I dream pretty big we have big things in our future um but there were some things on there that I caught myself taking a like <laughs> oh that's cute but not taking it serious yeah. and I I had to stop and check myself and say no like if that's what they desire that's God right. gives you the things you need that's right but he also wants you to get the things you desire yeah. you know as long as they're according to his will he wants you to Absolutely. enjoy life and and I'm telling you, like, if you think, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't, be I believe big, I have faith. Well, let me tell you, get yourself around some kids yes. who are dreamers, yes. kids who have big faith, and you'll find yourself 
<laughs> you'll yeah. find the areas where you're checked. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I got to take that before the Lord. You know, you kids, you got something and I need that. So we have the kids pray over yes. our stuff. When we were believing for something, when we were buying our home, you know, last year, we, we, you know, that we had yes. the kids pray and believe for it. Yes. They were talking to you guys about it at the children's <laughs> yeah. ministry because they have something inside of them. Amen. They're they just do. waiting for, you know, the opportunity to yes. let it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> like my kids are the same way, um, you know, that we sit down sometimes and when we're ever, whenever we're believing for something, we sit down as a family and we pray about it and we just tell them, you know, this is what we're believing for. This is what we're sending for. And it's so amazing because, you know, um, as adults, you have all these responsibilities mm -hmm. and things happening, you know, but kids, they don't, they think in their mind is like, God's going to do it. Did God do it already? Mm -hmm. And I'd have them ask me, mom, did it happen already? <laughs> mom, what did they say? Mom, it's going to happen, mom. We know like, yeah. so just that confidence. And I just love that, you know, kids are like that. And, and when we train them and we teach them to keep that zeal and keep that faith, it's just amazing to see, you know, them grow mm -hmm. in the children's ministry. My son is 21 years old and mm -hmm. he started four years old in our children's ministry. And now He's one of the teachers there. And just to wow. see, like, you know, the kids as they've gone through all our children's mm -hmm. ministry and now they're serving, you know, and that's another part. You teaching your kids to serve, even now, you know, serve at home. Mm -hmm. Just to see that, it's just amazing. Kids love for adults to teach them things, yes. especially when it comes to the things of the Lord. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one of the papers that you had sent home. Um, it said something about serving, how to serve your family, and it had a checklist. And I encourage you, like, have a checklist. I mean, yeah. sometimes we, for ourselves, need a checklist. <laughs> Be kind today. Okay, yeah. need that written down, you know. Um, have patience. Yes. Have peace. So in their checklist, it was about serving others. Mm -hmm. And um, you had in there, it said something like, uh, serve your sibling today. Yeah. Yeah. do something nice and I remember one of my kids they came up and they were like here and they gave something to their sibling they're like I'm done I checked it off I'm like they were just trying to check off their list but they did yes. they knew the principle they knew, they the knew principle. like yeah. that it was something oh, there's something in yes. this and you know obviously they're kids I mean I, I know just last week I I had a we have live stream on and so we had all our kids sitting at the table, and I got a picture of them watching live stream. They look so cute and so, oh, so holy. Yeah. And then five minutes later, you know, the three-year-old is screaming, you know, and I'm like, took another picture. I was like, and now here we are. But it's yeah. like they knew, like, hey, it's important. Yes. You know, they might not be grabbing everything, yes. but there's this seed planted. Yes, absolutely. The seed being planted. Absolutely. You know, um, I wanted to ask you. One, um, I think we kind of went there, but I did want to ask you um, just more directly, what things hinder what's being taught in children's ministry? What kind of things, um, more like kind of specifically, what kind of things would hinder what you teach in children's ministry? At, in their home? In their home, in their, home. in their environment, maybe the friend's house that they go to, anything that, you know, I know you've talked to parents before and told them, hey, you know, you adjust these kind of areas, you'll get the best benefit out of bringing your children to children's ministry? Um, I think it's just really important, um, you know, that the parents reassure the kids and re keep it in front of them. I think for kids, you know, their their little attention span is sometimes very limited, mm -hmm. especially I teach the preschool more than I do the big kids. But um, I think some things that hinder uh, the kids learning is that, you know, like I said, you just go to church and then that's it. They, they, they don't read with the kids mm -hmm. the word or they don't go over the lesson or they don't ask them. Like I'm after church, we always ask the kids, what did you learn? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the, the story about? You know, what were they talking about? And then I'll ask them, what does that mean to you? And you know, oh, that's and good. That's, I, what does that what mean does that to you? Mean to that's you? really yes. good. What did that mean to you? Because you know what? Um, that's something that would hinder your kids if you're not asking them, ask them questions, you know, what did you learn and what does that mean to you? Because what we learn is going to help us through the everyday life, even mm -hmm. kids, you know, even kids, because they do go into the school. What we teach them at church, they should be the, they should be the same at church as they are at school. And so when you reassure them, it won't hinder when they go to school that they're, oh my gosh, I'm not going to talk about Jesus or they should be talking about Jesus or yes. I'm not going to share what happened at children's church. That should be something that they're like, we had so much fun, yes. but we learned the word 
in there because they're little kids that could go into I know my niece would go into school and she had one person that she wanted to save Madeline <laughs> and she was determined you know they're determined and if you as a parent reassure them that that's okay because mm -hmm. God has a purpose for your life and I think that won't hinder their walk with God because they won't be scared mm -hmm. and they won't be like oh I shouldn't say this or I shouldn't say that but as a parent reassuring them asking them questions that is a big thing that won't hinder them learning because you as a parent are reassuring what the teacher is saying mm -hmm. and then asking maybe the teacher maybe you know you didn't get a handout or whatever and and asking taking that step further that's of what good. did you learn or asking the teacher what was my kid taught that's okay you should as a parent want to know what what the teachers are teaching mm -hmm. them and is it the word of god <laughs> and yes. that's the most important is it the word of god or is it your opinion our mm -hmm. pastor has always taught us teach the word of god and that's one of the most important things don't be afraid to ask the teachers what did they learn today or do you have a handout or and we send home crafts that are with the lesson mm -hmm. and so that's really important for you to ask the kids what are they learning at, mm -hmm. at church and one of the things that i know our children's ministry stands very strongly in is we don't babysit your kids right. we teach them the word of god that's they're right. having church while mm -hmm. they're back there and i love what you said about you know, that kids should be the same in children's church as they are school. at school. Mm -hmm. And that's a principle even adults yes. should be following. Yes. And, you know, if we think as adults, well, that's kind of difficult to do when I go into the workplace and I'm the only Christian. Um, I mean, imagine a child, yeah. how how they, how impressionable they can be um, and how difficult it might be for them. And so I love that you know, you're really painting a picture of how the family yes. and how the church yes. work together with just, you know, training up the child. Because when they get older, yes. like you said, I mean, you had your son, he started off in children's and now look at him, he's teaching yes. children's mm -hmm. now. And it's because, you know, are we all perfect? Are our kids perfect? No. Do they sometimes, you know, we can have families in church where you know their children grew up in church and they're no longer serving God but every mama I guarantee yes. you every mama is looking at this scripture as a, a right they're yes, looking at this promise. scripture as a promise yes. that this is what they stand on and you know maybe your child is um, grown and they're running from the Lord let me tell you this let me give you some you know or maybe your grandchild or you know, whatever circumstance you're in, this is a promise right. in the word of God. That's right. This is this is something we can stand confidently yes. on is that, you know, if we did our part, if we do what we're supposed to do, it doesn't matter what things look like. That's it right. matters what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. And if the word of God gives us a promise, then all we have to do is take it for ourselves That's and right. to stand on it and to That's believe right. that his word will come true. Amen. I just, I love that. And especially like, I have little ones, and so I know I've heard a minister one time, and her she you know has all boys, and hers are all older now, and they're in the ministry. And uh, someone had asked her, "Well, what do you do when you're when you're afraid? You mm -hmm. know that your kids might not, you know, if you don't do all this right, what if I don't get it done right?" And um, you know, and they don't serve God when they grow up. And she just very instantly said. Um, I don't concern myself. That's I right. never concerned myself with that thought or that question because to me it was never an option. That's right. I never saw my kids not serving God. And because of that, I kept myself at peace Amen. in raising them. Amen. And I think that's so important. And, and I really would like to talk about in this, you know, this next episode, yes. I want to talk about raising your kids with peace, with no yes, fear. Because children, they soak things up. Yes. And one of the things that my dad's always said is fear is taught. It's you're not born with that's fear. Right. That's why children can just run, you know, mm -hmm. and do whatever. And you're like, ah, you know, yes. because they're not, you know, they're, they're fearless. Yes. And so um, I encourage you, you know what, jo join us next week. Tune in next week. Um, whether you have kids or not, this is going to be something that you can help somebody else in or help yourself in when the time comes. Amen. And so um, I hope you have a great rest of the day. If you haven't watched last week's episode, I encourage you to go back and do that. We'll see you next week.